LZ77 Compression Algorithm What is it and how does it work? LZ77, also known as LZ1, is a lossless data compression algorithm. It was published in papers by Abraham Lempel and Jacob Ziv in 1977, and it forms the basis of many different variations that you may have heard of, such as LZ78, also known as LZ2, LZW, and LZMA. Theoretically, it's considered a dictionary coder. This is the class of lossless data compression algorithms that involves searching for matches between the text to compress and a set of strings in a data structure. So how does it look like? The intuition is that if we have already seen a particular substring, let's just mention where to look at in the original string to retrieve the same string. We can keep track of a sliding window of characters, so we reduce the overhead of computation and less memory is used. Note, we can have a stated length longer than the search window. This simply means paste the string length divided by distance times. So for example, if we're encoding this string that we have up here, we followed the following steps. For step one, we look at our dictionary and it's empty, so we can't possibly find the character A. So we output length distance 0, 0, A. So offset 0, and then we have length 0. Afterwards, we have step two. Here we have another A, so we can just simply reference it, 1, 1. And we get a B. We haven't seen a B before, so we put 0, 0, B. Same, we haven't seen a C before in step four, so we put 0, 0, C. And in step five, we've seen a B before. So you can reference it as a second character with a length of one because the string isn't BC, it's BB. But then once we get to step six, we have to reference B again. But notice here that our dictionary size already got large enough, so we're gonna make it small enough. Since we made it smaller, our apple will be one, one on step six. For step seven, now we have ABC in a row. And since we have ABC in a row, we could just simply reference 5, 3, and then we get the remaining portion over there. Decoding is very simple. For decoding, we have 0, 0, A, so we immediately know that it's output stream A. Then we reference 1, 1, which is the very first item we remove, so we put A again. We get 0, 0, B, which is B, so A, B. We get C, which is C. We reference B, and we have to reference B again. And then afterwards, we get A, B, C, which is 5, 3, which again, we just simply put ABC. So, there's different variations of LZ77. For example, LZSS improves it by adding a 1-bit flag to indicate if the next data chunk is a literal or not. That way we remove all those redundant zero zeros. Another example is the deflate algorithm, which is used by web browsers to compress HTTP bodies using a combination of LZSS and Huffman code. The pseudocode is the following. So while the inputs are empty, we first get the longest prefix of input that begins inside that window dictionary. If such a prefix exists, we get the length of it, uh, the length of the prefix, and the character following the prefix in the input. Otherwise, we set both i and l to zero. Then we output this, and then we pop l plus one charge from the front of the window and discard l plus one charge from the front of the window as well. And lastly, we append s to the back of the window. So what does the implementation look like? So it turns out for the decoder, it's fairly simple. We can do this in a linear fashion. Just iteratively build a dictionary and drop terms as you pass through the sliding window. So if you're interested in implementing this, you should look into a circular buffer data structure. For encoding, which is also known as factorization, there are several academic research papers to make this more efficient. The road algorithm is quadratic time. You can reduce this to on plus om time if you use a static dictionary, which doesn't change according to the time window. We can leverage suffix trees and suffix arrays in order to accomplish this. If it's dynamic, I'll link several different algorithms down below. The main benefit of a suffix tree is that when we're doing the traversal to figure out what the different substrings are within the dictionary, we just simply traverse a tree-like structure, which lets us effectively do it all one per character. This is much more efficient than having to potentially backtrack inside the array when you're determining the optimal suffix arrangement. Similarly, suffix arrays are another optimization which compared to suffix trees use three to five times less memory, they're nearly as efficient, and they're more appropriate to use when the alphabet size is high dimension. This uses lexicographically sorted arrays, holding the same data as a suffix tree, but in an implicit way. So if you're interested in using this, I suggest you look into suffix arrays. There's also various different encoding algorithms that you can optionally use. I attached a link below with some research papers on them, including interesting ON time complexity algorithms. Thank you very much for watching and please subscribe for new videos every Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern. See you all next week.